All right, I'm going to show you how to make um, a bar chart with error bars, which is what we usually use to represent a confidence interval. It's It sometimes represents other things. Sometimes you just do a standard error either way or even a standard deviation either way. But I think the most useful thing to do with it is represent a confidence interval. So to st set up our data first, um, notice that I've got the data set up here. So this, this data right here could have come from the person in the team for our ARC assignment. <coughs> who was supposed to do the descriptive statistics. You've got for each group for the example paper, the full irrigation mean, partial irrigation mean, standard deviations for each, and the sample size for each. Now you can kind of ignore this for right now, um, but we'll focus on that when we need confidence intervals. We actually don't need this stuff for confidence intervals. We just need the margin of error. Well, let's focus on it. All right. So degrees of freedom I don't know if you guys know how to use Excel, but this stuff is just typed in here. If you look right here, you can see that up here, that's like the true contents of the cell when you click. When you click here, the true contents is just a number. This is just SD, etc. And I just used formatting like bold, etc. to make this look nice. But over here, you see degrees of freedom. It says 20 when you look at it, but up here it's a formula. A formula is anything starts with equals. So what I did when this was empty is I just clicked in here and I hit the equals key and see that equals there and then you can just click on a cell and if I just said equals that and enter then it would just take the value of this cell and put it here but instead I did equals that minus one because that's the degrees of freedom for a T confidence interval for a single group and I did the same thing here equals D4 minus one and then the T values is just numbers I looked these up in the textbook, in the back of the textbook, this is the critical value for 0.025 in one tail, in other words, 0.05 in both tails, which is what we're going to need for a confidence interval for t. So I need degrees of freedom to find out this, and I need this to find out um, the margin of error. And then the standard error here is the standard deviation, slash means divided by, and then there's a function in Excel called square root, and you just type in sqrt, the case doesn't matter, and then in parentheses, um, actually, you can type in D3, which is column D, row 3, but what I did was um, I just did equals, and then I took I click on the standard deviation, divided by SQRT, and then I open the parentheses, and I the, st uh, the square root of N, not the square root of the degrees of freedom, but the square root of N. And Excel is smart. If you have things laid out on a table, you can just do... Uh, a copy here and paste. I guess you can just do normal paste there. And it will paste the values. Of course, by doing that, I got rid of my formatting. So let me undo that. So my formatting's there. And then the margin of error is another thing. I just say the t that I found times the standard error. And that's my margin of error. That's half of the confidence interval. So, um, I'm not going to show you the whole confidence interval because that will just be in the chart. Now to put a chart in here, I'm going to click this somewhere. So I think that helps place the chart. I'm going to click insert here. Insert just a column chart. Don't do 3D columns. They're, they're ugly. Nobody likes them. Everybody hates 3D columns. They think they're cool, but they're like the guy with the popped collar and the fake spray on tan. They're total douchebag graphs. So I'm entering the column and notice that nothing happened here. So I'm going to delete that and go and try this again, and I'm going to show you a different way of doing it. Select your names and your means, and then enter the 2D column. Ha! Ah, it made my graph for me. Isn't that beautiful? It is le beautiful. It is le gorgeous. I don't need this series one because there's only one series, so I'm going to click that and hit the delete key and delete it. Um, I think 1425 to 1455. I don't know. That, that looks pretty skinny to me. Well, we'll see what happens. I also don't like these horizontal bars. You can leave them on if you like. I like to delete them. Basically, if you click something, then you can do something to it in an Excel graph. I might make this a little taller here. Now, we're missing a few things. So I'm going to go to chart layout, and I'm going to do chart title, centered overlay title. We need a title here. So I'm going to say... Um, Crop yield by irrigation type. And we need some axis labels. I mean, seriously, we got a primary horizontal axis title, below axis. So I can say type of irrigation. And then 
under axis title I can do a vertical axis title um, I guess this way no I don't like that I'm going to do control Z and undo that here and you could do that but I like it uh, rotated title there there we go so then I can say um, yield per acre kilograms okay now now it's a pretty chart now it's looking good this is looking nice but I need you can make this go down below the title if you want um, I need to put in error bars here now notice if I click these bars I get both bars highlighted uh, but then if you click again you only get one bar highlighted I think I want them both because what I'm going to use is this margin of error it's lined up with these it's on the same row as the mean and standard deviation it's over here but that's okay so I'm going to go here and click the bars and right click oh never mind that's not what I'm going to do I'm going to click the bars and go to chart layout and click error bars but I want more error bars it wants to do my error bars but it will calculate those wrong because we haven't put in the right kind of data for that I'm going to do more error bars option now I want both directions and a cap is nice that's the standard way to do things so instead of just a line that ends sometimes people do that I like the cap I don't want a fixed value I don't want percentage I want standard deviations because I don't even know what my standard deviations are I don't want standard errors you could do that but it doesn't really know what my standard error is um, I want custom and specify value now when this pops up this is a way that you can click this little bar here and choose some values now I'm gonna hit the delete just so that goes blank just in case we have problems but I'm gonna click that and that's the lower bar and I'm gonna select both of these oh wait sorry both of these here the margin of error and then I click that again and now that's selected and then this I'm gonna do this again I'm gonna delete that because sometimes you have problems and I'm going to select the same thing. So you see we have the positive error value, in other words the amount that goes up, and the negative, the amount that goes down. Um, I have those being the same amount here. So I click OK on that, and it, you notice it rescaled my graph so that it would all fit in there. And that's nice, you can force it to do something different, but it looks pretty nice. And there we go, that's great. And that doesn't look like they should be uh, there should be a statistically significant difference, although as you've seen there is. Well, if these bars were not overlapping, then you could be sure that there would be a statistically significant difference. But in a two-means situation, even if the bars do overlap, the difference between the means might still be significant. So if they didn't overlap, you could be sure it's significant. But if they don't overlap, you're not really sure, and you have to do the test. Anyway, this is ready. And if you click this and copy, then you can paste it into a Microsoft Word document, like I'm going to do with this example. Here, let me just do le paste there we go I think that's looking pretty good um, put this on the same page so there's the graph and we're done